I am very pleased to be here on My Magical Thing with Lon Marlaka Taquette, who is an occultist, hermeticist, musician, thelemite, writer on Enochian magic, ceremonial magic, the work of Alistair Crowley. I know your work primarily through uh, the book My Life with the Spirits, which is utterly brilliant. And also, Peace Be Upon It for the Chicken Kabbalah, which, if I remember correctly, describes the Hebrew letter Lamed as looking like a snake that swallowed a brick and thought better of it or had second thoughts, I think. Lon, it's lovely to have you here. Thank you for so much. Well, thank you very much. I'm very flattered to uh, be able to expose my magic thing. Please may we see your magical thing, Lon. Excuse me while I pull it out. Certainly. Gosh. Okay, can, can we see it? Okay. Yeah, I think so. I have many magical things, as you can imagine. But I have behind, no doubt. Behind those curtains is a plethora. But this is the magic thing that I've chosen to uh, to show you. And it's my wand. And uh, as you might imagine, there's a story behind it. Uh, but first of all, take a nice look at it there. Maybe I could make it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Oh. And on one end, it has sort of a... Sort of a... Classic. Classic yeah. magician's wand. Yeah. Okay. Well... Early, early in my magical career, uh, about 1978, well, maybe not even that, I was initiated in the OTO uh, by uh, Phyllis Seckler and Grady McMurtry uh, in 1975. And in 1976, and I took my uh, Minerval initiation there at their home in Dublin, California. It's like a gingerbread house, okay? It was a beautiful cottage in a beautiful backyard with uh, two almond trees and uh, a fish pond and everything else. It was just paradisial. And uh, six months after my Minerval initiation, which is zero degree, uh, uh, I took my first degree initiation, which is a little more elaborate, and it was at their home. And uh, uh, they were the two officiating officers, along with Helen Parsons Smith, the widow of both Jack uh, Parsons of uh, Strange Angel fame, and uh, Wilfred Smith, uh, uh, the Lodge Master of Agape Lodge for a number of years. Uh, so these old wonderful characters uh, were my initiators. And uh, I was just starting my magical practice. And you know there's four major magical weapons that a magician makes. And uh, you're supposed to really kind of uh, uh, start at the lowest, lower end of the yod hey vav hey formula. You're supposed to make your disc first, and, uh, which, I, which I did. Uh, uh, but hang on, I'll, I'll show you that thing, too, if I can find. There it is. That was the pattern for my magical disc, okay? Yeah. And, uh, and you're supposed to build your whole career magical. It's supposed to state what your idea of the entire universe is, okay? so Because if you don't know where you're standing... How are you going to be a magician if you don't know what, what the reality that you pretend you're standing on? Okay, so that's what the, the disc is supposed to do. But I wanted a wand. Man, I wanted my wand. So I wanted to draw the pentagrams, not just with my finger or incense or some wussy kind of... I wanted a wand. A proper that, that wand. A proper wand. And wag against uh, the demons and stuff like that. But it's supposed to be the last 
the highest of the weapons that, that you're supposed to be hip enough to, <laughs> to make. But anyway, tradition says uh, uh, they sort of follow the, the ancient uh, uh, Kabbalistic thing. And the big wand in Kabbalistic history is Aaron's wand, his rod that he gave to Moses so Moses could just, you know, kill people at a, you know, and cause blood and locusts and <laughs> stuff. I wanted one of those bloody locust things I could of my own. And that was made out of almond, almond wood. And it was supposed to be cut just as the almond branch is flowering. And this is even repeated in Tannhäuser in, in uh, Wagner's uh, story of the Pope having his wand uh, blossom. Uh, but anyway, there were two almond trees in the backyard of Phyllis's uh, uh, home. I wanted to cut my wand. So uh, I found the perfect, perfect uh, uh, length of almond wood on that tree, about that far. And it was half, almost creamish green and half dark as if it had uh, it grown through a couple seasons of difficult but anyway it's perfect it was half white and half black and i had to stand on a on the top rung of a ladder and grady mcmurtry had to hold my belt from from below so i wouldn't fall off and he had crowley's uh, gold uh Nuit uh, seal ring on his finger. I remember looking down and seeing that. And I cut that with a single blow like you're supposed to. And I had big pruning shears. And it was great. And I took it home and I sanded it and I and I uh, uh, peeled it. And then I put it in a fixture in my garage to straighten it perfectly. And for 90 days it sat there. And uh, it was absolutely absolutely gorgeous and i i made up a consecration ceremony that was two weeks long from the new moon from a new moon to the full moon in aries and every night i would light up a big bowl of uh, uh alcohol in our in our little tiny apartment living room in costa mesa and I would do the barbarous words of evocation and, and I would invoke fire into it. And every night I got louder and louder and did more and more rounds of the barbarous words until I was just spitting fire. Uh, and on the last night of the, the consecration ceremony, uh, the, a huge water main broke in, in the driveway of our apartment complex and washed most of the asphalt away. And I figured, ah, oh, that was the ecstatic end of all of that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but anyway, on the first day, the first morning, I was going to use it. Oh, and I had sewn this wonderful bag for it, too. And, uh, First morning, I was going to do my, my morning yoga and uh, magical practices. Uh, I got up, put on my black robe, got my wand out. Finally, if I was going to use it, I put it on my chair uh, and I went in the kitchen and I got a cup of coffee, uh, like I'm just talking about here. Got a cup of coffee, kind of stumbled back in sat down on the chair and broke that sucker right in two. <laughs> and for a minute, for a minute I, I had an internal nervous breakdown. You can't believe. And then I thought to myself, if I don't think this is funny, I'm not a magician. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so I I started to laugh maniacally. I woke the neighbors and Constance and John Paul in the next room with my laughter. And then the next night, okay. In the meantime, six months before that, 
I had cut this wand as a practice wand. Ah. Okay. I had snuck into somebody's backyard in Huntington Beach and stole it off of their tree. And I'd been using it as a surrogate wand until my really good wand was consecrated. So I got this one out. And, and uh, instead of doing, I set up my little living room temple just the way I had set it up for all of those 14 nights. And I put the two broken pieces in my thurible and poured alcohol all over the top of it and burned that sucker. And as it was on, on fire, I rotated this one into the flames and did the barbarous words and everything else. And when the flames started to go out, I put more alcohol in till it caught again. And I just kept rotating this into the fire. And finally, when it was just down to one little stub of an ember that was still left, I hovered this point right over the that ember until it went out. And just before it went out, I smashed it on the top of it. And I said, Jump in there, God damn it. <laughs> Lon, that is the most fantastic tale of a magical thing. That is the most fantastic um, story of the creation of your magician's wand in the outer and in the inner. And I want to thank you very, very much for that. It's really appreciated, man. Thanks for sharing that with us. You bet. Sorry it took so long. No, oh, man, that's a great story. Class stuff. Stay well. Okay. Bless you. Oh, cheers, love. See you later. Ciao.